Let me wipe y'all off real quick, man. I got to wipe y'all down, bro. Wipe me down, uh-huh. A wipe me down, uh-huh. Okay. King Kong. King Kong. King Kong. All right, now let's talk about some 2K news though. Before you know what I'm saying, before we start talking about, yo, how do you, you know what I'm saying, what what beer products do you use? You know what I'm saying, exclamation beard in the chat. You feel me? Shit like that. Shit like that. All right, um, Ronnie 2K dropped the Instagram post. Hold up, hold up, hold up. See Chris Kudo just subscribed. Yo, appreciate Big that, 16 sir. months. Hey Carter, do you think the smaller height bigs will be as useful as the taller ones? Um, let me see. Let me let me check that question. Um, the smaller height bigs will be useful because they'll be able to shoot over their taller counterparts, but you're not gonna be able to bang too much down low like you think you would. Like I feel like now that they're talking about strength and all that really, really matter, don't be trying to min max your build. You feel me? Like if you a big, either you're gonna be a big or you're gonna be a swing, you still have options. I want everybody to understand, bro. You got fucking options. You ain't got to create one build that's going to do it all or whatever the case may be. Just create a build that you like for your options. If you want to have a 73, a 75, 3 is a big, go ahead and create your big like that. It's just, you know how it is. Like, we played 23. If you went up against a 73 big and you was 7 foot or 6 11 or 6 10, sometimes you get out snagged. Sometimes you get out worked. But for the most part, at the end of the game, you most likely had more points than rebounds than that big, right? So, like, if that big had 8 and 15, you might have had 18 and, and 7. I mean, the way I think about it, it all depends on, like, where you stand with that. Like, if you got 18 and 7, that means that you score 18 points because he couldn't guard you from the 3. He was too worried about the paint. You had 7 rebounds, which means it was probably mostly defensive because on the offensive end, you were standing in the corner. So, you got 7 defensive rebounds over a 7-3 big, and you dropped 18. I feel like when you look at both spectrums, they both going to do their job. You feel me? They both going to do their job. Like, a 7-3 is going to sit there and try to guard the paint as best he can from everything. So, he might have a couple blocks. Of course, he might be getting more rep because he's, you know, banging in the paint, trying to get boards, trying to get, you know what I mean, uh, defensive stops and stuff like that. So, it's really about where you stand with your build. You know what I'm saying? Like, some builds just are designed to do different shit. It doesn't mean that you're anything, any less of a big because of that. It just means that, shit, you got your buckets and your couple rebounds. He got a shit ton of rebounds and couldn't score the ball because the guard was trying to score the whole game because they know their big can't shoot. That's the things that, you know what I'm saying, that's what it really be coming down to. You know what I mean? Like, like, and plus, I'm going to be honest, most big bigs, like 7-3 bigs and stuff like that, they don't put into no shooting. So they don't got no post game. They can't shoot a fade. They can't, you know what I'm saying? They can't do no hook shots for real because they don't know they timing. Like, it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff that be going on. Like when you a taller big, it's like, are you really serviceable? That's why, like in 21, I made a big that could shoot the midi. I was fucking people up from the midi. Niggas hated me. But in 23, when my big got made, you know what I'm saying? Tough NYC, you know what you did. He made my big completely no shooting stuff like that. It was like, yo, I think this might be the best big for you. And I was like, all right, man, fuck it, just create it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's how it is. But uh, let's talk about this news, right? Some new news and shit just dropped. So let me go ahead and um, let me go ahead and do this real quick. Biggest fucking news of the day. <sighs> this shit literally just dropped, chat. Listen, I need somebody, to, I need somebody to clip this after I get done saying this. I don't know what. Davo told me or tried to, you know, tell me in one of his vlogs or whatever about, you know, him playing the game and stuff like that. But when he said same game, it's because he ain't know nothing like this. He thought when he got on the sticks, visually he think, you know, oh, I'm saying the same thing. Okay, I'm seeing adrenaline bars and stuff like that. But like I said, when you playing a game of 5v5, on 2K and nothing else, you don't get to see shit else. Your perception is this is the same thing that I saw last year. You know what I'm saying? Because visually, 2K is not going to go out of the box in one year as far as graphics go. But ever since the next gen came out, it looked like they've been in the background working, developing, 
putting shit together. And with this release right here, bro, I'm going to just be honest. I want to know what y'all think. Because I already know what I think. You know what I'm saying? I already know what I think. If if I'm going to be one of those type of people that, you know, chase for, you know, top 10 and stuff like that, then, you know, I'll let y'all know how the, how the journey go. If I'm going to stop, if I'm going to keep going, you know what I mean, where I'm going to be in, in that. But this shit is a W. This is what everybody was talking about. Everybody since fucking NBA what? I think it was like NBA 19, NBA 2K19 to 2K20. Like, everybody been wanting that, you know, that grind back. Like, and this is like 16, 17 grind where, you know, you. It, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Can I, can, I say, can I say one thing? This shit is not really no different besides the last two years. Like, this, this rep grind is like easy. You know what I'm saying? But it's like 2K has given us so many things over the last couple of years to like learn like the, the legend grind, the level 40 grind. You know what I'm saying? And then like putting the legend grind on top of the level 40 grind and making us grind for two different things, whether it's seasonal rewards or it's the overall length of the year reward, which was legend. But what it really come down to with this whole rep is back thing, because, you know, this is this is a dope little post that, you know, Ronnie put out, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, this this, this, this is going to feed the streets. What's the rewards going to look like? That's the big that's the biggest thing that everybody needs to take from this. What is the rewards going to look like? Because regardless of it being a rep system, a grind to legend, a road to 99, a level 40, whatever that is, what are the rewards going to be like? And if you will have dope ass rewards, will you tell us? Because I'm going to tell you all right now, all the news that I'm going to go over in this stream, Mike Wang has been transparent as fuck. And he's been giving us fucking actual factual numbers on shit. So I'm hoping that the marketing team, which is Ronnie and all of them, doing this, will they be transparent enough as when the game drops on day one and fuck, even in the next week or two, tell us what we will get once we become top 10. And also, is top 10 just the top 10 people that make it the top 10 get a, get a crazy rewards like a you know the a over accelerated bill 99 overall whatever the case may be or is top 10 just the name and everybody can chase top 10 and get the same rewards maybe get their name on the wall like the old old days and stuff like that and what are the rewards going to look like and will they tell us what the rewards are going to look like that's all that I pray for because as a consumer of 2K I've been a consumer of 2K since its inception I've always just wanted transparency because as I became a, a public figure, I guess you can call it, or a, a content creator, streamer, influencer, whatever, I've been fighting every year to say, yo, we, we love that you guys are working in the background. We love that, you know, you're trying to make a good game. But please be transparent with everyone so everybody knows what's going down. So there can't be one person out there in the world that says, oh, I don't like 2K because they too secretive. They keep trying to surprise us. I'm over it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't believed in motherfucking the two fairies since I was seven. I ain't believed in Santa since I was nine. Nigga, I don't want to be surprised on shit. Don't throw me no surprise. Party involve me. Because maybe that day I might not be feeling it. And that's that's everybody, bro. So you can't really keep trying to surprise people with a great product. Just come out with a great product, be transparent, and make people gawk. Like, I promise you on everything I love, bro, the stuff that I saw from, like, Tough NYC yesterday, bro, he said his shit had him foaming out the mouth, bro, <laughs> over all the news and shit that dropped. So, like, it's it's that type of vibe, yo. Give us give us that back, you know what I mean? Let us, let us go crazy with all the information. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to um, a whole bunch of 2K news and stuff like that. Um, not yo, uh, yo, DMV. I promise you, my homie tweeted 2K24 news got him foaming out the mouth, bro. It had him foaming out the mouth, bro. I said, God damn, boy, shit, nigga, <laughs> you woo, god damn. Um, you said, I don't know what, oh, my bad, case, you know, you know, you know, I rent. I ramble and shit like that. Yo, um, hey, hey, yo, chat, um, spam refresh in the chat for anybody who might have, um, might have froze or whatever the case may be. Um, let's see. I'm looking at the comments right now, seeing if I, uh, 
See if I missed anything. You feel me? All right, but, but we good. We good. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about all the news on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute the music now since we are into that that uh, world. Let me see. Display. Okay, boom. All right, so check this out, chat. Um, first off, we going we, we got to go over the course I report. I know that I did this on my YouTube channel and shout out to everybody that subscribed to me on YouTube for sure. You know what I'm saying that watched that uh, 30 minute video, but in this stream, I just want to go over the things that Mike Wang is saying and tweeting Every, all the other press release stuff like that. We can, we can go over that if y'all want, but I want to hone in on what Mike has been saying, because that's the, that's the biggest thing that we need to talk about. You feel me? Like that's, that's what it, that's what it's really about. All right, let me see. All right, so this is the Dev Diaries. Um, this is the thing that I didn't go over on YouTube simply because, you know, I didn't know if like certain stuff was copywritten and stuff like that, so I didn't put it into the video. But let's hear it. Players who play on Hall of Fame or comp online games will be playing with green or miss shot timing for the ultimate challenge. Okay, so what he just said, green or miss on Hall of Fame or online which is park and rec from what i understand from that my team they get to choose all the different player shots but they're all going to be shooting from a queue all right but team control modes will see more forgiving shot timing so you won't have to memorize every single player's release to the exact frame to find success the shot timing release time setting from nba 2k23 has been converted to a new setting called shot timing visual queue now you can see this that that was a W for me. Him saying that shot visual visual Q, that's a W to me. I'm gonna be honest. Like that's that's how I shoot. I've been shooting with the Q since I think like NBA 2K19. Yeah, NBA 2K19. I've been a Q shooter ever since then. So it's dope that they actually you know ramp this right into the game so that a lot of people don't have to worry about like oh what's the best jump shot boom boom shoot with your cue whether your jump shot is fast or slow whatever the case may be but just worry about the defensive immunity for sure though set your desired release point based on whatever animation cue works best for you this makes it much easier to play with players and teams you're not as familiar with advanced layups like floaters reverses euros hop steps and scoops are much more effective this year and i'd encourage everyone to try out layup timing it's much more forgiving for high percentage layups and also gives you the ability to finish tough circus layups in traffic if you can master it. For dunkers in new gen, you can now force rim hangs from any two hand dunk by simply keeping the sprint trigger held when the dunker grabs the rim. Down on the pro, oh, my bad. pro stick will give you flashy dunks and up down or down up double throws will let you attempt contact dunks in traffic with the dunk meter. Meter dunks are green or miss on higher difficulty levels now, so you have to be precise to finish off the play. Bigs are going to have a lot of fun dominating in the paint in NBA 2K24. You can now branch out of any offensive rebound to a putback attempt by simply pressing the shot button after the catch. Post fades and hop shots are also really effective shots for post players, and you can definitely feel the impact of strength and weight as bigger players <laughs> ease. Hey yo, K Sounds, all you heard was Slasher Gang, H and A was good. We dominate weaker ones on the glass. Everything about offense, defense, and coaching has been streamlined to make NBA 2K24 more enjoyable for all. We can't wait for you to experience the ultra-realistic gameplay in NBA 2K24. All right, so like I said, that was to let everybody know about shot time and layup time and dunking and paint play. Like, those are the pillars of offense. We all know that. Now, dribbling. Let's talk about it real quick. been Mike Wang's like like staple uh, as a developer he's always been into making certain movements doing certain you know I guess you could say combinations to get open for high percentage shots that's all that really matters one of my favorite elements in NBA 2k24 
runs for dunks. All right, so that's 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 that for dribbling, right? Hey, yo, um, damn, bro, why you why you why you on my head like that, bro? What did he do to you, bro? Dang, bro, he took your girl on a date or something, bro. God damn, that boy was snapping. So look, as far as that goes with the dribbling, right? The the dribblers heard that adrenaline bars won't disappear from dribbling, right? What the defenders heard was. If I bump him, he's going to lose adrenaline bars and it's going to be harder for him to score. And other people heard that, okay, we get signature size ups. And this is for like more like ISO players. We get signature size ups, you know, whether you have the sprint button or the not sprint button. You can do whatever signature size up that you want to do. And when you tap in R2, you can, you know, do a little, I, I won't call it a speed boost, but it is, it's probably most likely going to be a, a speed boost where you throw the ball because, all different dribblers have different animations, so somebody's going to find that push the ball out animation that feels like more of a speed boost that creates the most separation, and that's what a lot of dribblers probably going to be using all year long. But the biggest thing for me is with me creating a lockdown for the first part of NBA 2K24, I want to see how I actually can defend the ball. That's, that's my big thing because... The one thing that I haven't done in a very long time is create a lockdown. I haven't created a lockdown build since NBA 2K19. In NBA 2K19, I created, I believe, a shot create. Not not a shot create. I created a, a I think it was a, was it a score? I think it was, I think it was a score in, in 20, right? Was it a two-way, was it a two-way uh, ball handling? No, I think it was a two-way. Oh, I can't remember. I don't know. Okay, so in 2K20, I created a BP build. I also created a playmaking shot creator. And what else? I think I created one small forward because in 2K19, my slash and shot creator got nerfed. So in 2K19, I ended up creating the pure lockdown at 610. Then in 21, I created the 67 power forward, the OP build. Um, and 22, I created the, what build I create? I created the, the small forward, I created the center, and I created a five now point guard. And in 23, I created a inside out scorer, a two way inside out scorer, six nine meta. And that big, uh, that seven, that seven foot big was created for me. So like I've had, I've had a couple builds, but like I haven't done a, I haven't done a lock in a long time like somebody that's just either going to sit in the corner or sit hash or just be a slasher for backdoor cuts and a lockdown like i want to i want to go back to being a lockdown you feel me yeah yeah that two-way slashing playmaker for sure yep the scoring machine yep the scoring machine yep yep yo i appreciate y'all for knowing the content and shit like that bro for real um, yes, yes, boom. We are on day one for sure. We are on day one for sure. You already know. Listen, everybody in the chat, if you're gonna be on this 2K shit, please make sure y'all, y'all, I'm saying, join the Discord, bro. Type in the chat, exclamation Discord. Y'all gonna wanna be on the Discord. If you wanna grind with us, because we're gonna play a little bit of part. But I'm telling you, we're gonna try to see what that rec experience is like. So if you wanna be with us on day one on the game, pull up to the Discord. I'm, I'm, I'm just letting y'all know that now. All right, let's talk about defense, you know what I'm saying? Mikey! Defensive movement has improved on many fronts, with better responsiveness and less sliding. This helps defenders get where they need to be, and with the improved body-up system, ball handlers will have a tough time getting free against great defenders. The improved contact can also be felt in the paint. Big defensive anchors will have a much easier time putting a body on shooters at the rim and forcing tough shots. Directional steals are also back. You need to reach with the correct hand closest to the ball and avoid reaching across the body to maximize success and avoid foul calls. You can also use directional steals to play passing lanes by flicking the right stick in the correct direction to get your hand in the way and deflect the pass. And when it comes to contesting shots, it's important to be patient and wait for the correct time to jump. If you're behind the shooter, jumping too early, biting on fakes, or closing out late, you'll quickly find yourself racking up fouls and giving up and one opportunities. Everything about offense. Now, let me be clear. What Mike is saying is, don't jump. Don't fucking jump. Don't fucking jump. I pr don't jump. If you jump, you're a lost soul. Don't jump, bruh. Put your hand up. 
Stay in front of the ball handler. Don't jump. But also, um, Mike and them basically talked about, you know, ghost contests and stuff like that. And we'll go over that later. But a lot of ghost contests that were in 23, they're supposed to be, you know, alleviated. So a lot of that, like, thinking like, oh, I put my hand up at the last second, even though he did a fade and I got 9%. Maybe that might be going because... You know, with them also saying that fading isn't as crazy as it used to be from the three, I promise you, once we get all our badges, once we max out our builds, you're going to see people out here fading, bro. I promise you on everything. You know what I mean? But uh, let's go down real quick. Uh, how about no sliding? Yo, so look, so look, so look. Hold on, hold on. I got you, I got you, I got you. Um, So boom, this right here. I know you see this. I'm, I'm going I'm gonna to highlight it for you, bro. This is this is all on their course I report. This is the most transparent that I've ever seen 2K be about all the new things in 2K. Like I feel like all of the all of the secrecy from next gen when it was first announced up until now is like now they finally get to showcase everything that they've been working on for the last couple years with next gen. Because remember, next gen is supposed to be the new. Now, some people would say, yo, if this, like, for instance, what if this is the best NBA 2K game ever made, right? People will say, oh, well, it took them three years to make a great game. Wow. I don't care. But it's like, yo, when you when you working with a new system and you working with, like, nuances and, and trying to push the envelope, shit takes time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. We got video games that have been out for a decade plus that people still play. You know what I'm saying? And and teams add on top of those games because they know that that game was pretty good, but they have yet to come out with a new game. There's other games that are like story mode games that come out one year, and you might not see the next iteration of it for three to four years. But for sports games, some shooters and racing games, when, when these games come out every year and you see little to no advancement, the first thing in your mind is they ain't doing no work. They not, they not working hard enough. They not, they not trying to push the envelope when everything's in the background. And that's where things, you know, the disconnect from consumer and company. Like, as, as a consumer, you're like, man, they ain't changing enough and they ain't making no upgrades. They ain't doing nothing. This is whack. But now that they did all this, all this 2K24 news dropped yesterday, it's like, maybe they have been doing all this shit. And then, fucking Ronnie dropping rep is back on a, on a social media post. It's like, y'all think they wasn't listening? Y'all y'all think, y'all think they, you know what I'm saying? For the, for the people who dropped constructive criticism, do y'all think that they wasn't listening now? Because a lot of shit that they got into this game, it's like, it's a lot of things that a lot of people ask for, but it still stands that we got to see how defense plays. We got to see how offensive plays. We got to make sure that they don't patch the game unless it's a, a necessary patch that, you know what I mean, like something is broken and they got to fix it. But other than that, let us ball out for at least like, I say I say let us ball out to the, to the first day of the NBA starting. I think that's like October 23rd to 28th, sometime around there. Let us ball from September 8th. All the way till almost November without touching too much anything that's not overpowered or broken. You know what I mean? And I don't even want to say overpowered. I just want to say broken. Like, like for instance, if you load into the park and you get an error code, like that's something that needs to be fixed. But if somebody say, oh, well, um, I don't have all of my, my dribbling uh, badges. I don't have unpluckable on and I keep getting ripped. Well, defenders don't have to put that much into their build except for defense that's i think that's what a lot of people be forgetting as a defender on 2k you have one category to focus on that's your category and it's fat you get all of your defensive badges faster than you get all of your offensive badges because you have three different categories to work with you got to work on your shooting. You got to work on your dribbling. You got to work on your finishing. Defenders only got to work on one thing. And all the constant bumps they get, all the stops they get, all the steals they get, all the blocks they get, all the rebounds they get, all of that shit counts to their one category. So there, you might think like, oh, why is, it, why is this defender doing this to me? It's because they don't have to outwork you. 
they just got to play defense and their build will completely surpass you on that end of the on the end, end of the spectrum whereas the offensively you might be like I can't shoot over this person. I can't dribble past him. I can't dunk on him. What the fuck is going on? Why can't I do this? It's because you got to work on three categories of badges and attributes just to make your build whole. Whereas though, they can probably get a 75 three-pointer and go sit in the corner, go sit at the hash, you know what I'm saying, and work all on defense. And they guarding the ball as soon as it inbounds. They they on ball, getting bumps and all that, getting rep and stuff like that to their badges. They they playing you all the way to the paint sometimes. They tell the big, you know, come over if you need to, but I got this. You know what I'm saying? They playing passing lanes. They every fucking where. And they constantly getting all these badge points, bro. And and that's what a lot of people don't be think, thinking about. Like, for real, for real. Um, let me see. You said, oh, them, them servers definitely going to crash on launch day. I, I hope not. But you just said they going crash, and then you said, I hope not. Which one is it, bro? <laughs> like, god damn. All right, but let's talk about takeovers real quick, man. Takeover returns to NBA 2K24, but with a different spin. Instead of assigning a takeover ability as part of the build process, now you can choose a category of attributes to boost on the fly. When you fill up the takeover meter, you can choose between finishing, shooting, playmaking, defense rebounding, or physicals. If you delay your takeover and fill up double takeover, you can choose two different categories of ratings to boost, making you a true threat on both ends of the floor. Everything about offense, defense, and coaching has been streamlined to make you All right, so what I get what I get from that, right? I'm trying to I'm trying to understand what physical uh like, you know, takeover will be. Um I'm I'm hoping that physical takeovers will like will be something like you boost up your strength or you boost up your vertical to like leap higher for rebounds, dunks and stuff like that, strength for back downs and you know what I mean, like the bully badge and stuff like that to help activate that even harder like I'm really trying to figure out uh, physical attributes because now with 2K when when they first came out 2K10, 2K11 with this mob player stuff, right? We had access to a plethora of things like your lateral quickness, your defensive and offensive awareness, like your tendencies and stuff like that. Like we had access to all of that. So I'm trying to figure out, is 2K going to turn us back into nerds and give us access to those, you know, minute things? Or will it still be vertical acceleration and strength, speed, you know, stamina and stuff like that? But if let's say you have let's say a 75 strength when you get your physical takeover will it go to 85 will it go to 90 and will 2k tell us where we land on the spectrum as far as when we activate that takeover how many points we will get and stuff like that that's that's the real big question you know what i'm saying but um let's let's listen to this coach with e stuff real quick UK Smart Play is back, making play calling more accessible for everybody. As you bring the ball up court, an overlay will come up recommending the best play and player for that possession. Tap L1 or the left bumper before crossing half court to run it. And to call your favorite plays, press the directional pad to the left and choose from up to 16 of your preferred actions. You can call anything from full plays to ISOs and give and goes. Everything about offense, Defense and coaching has been streamlined to make NBA 2K24 more. All right. Now, of course, with coaching, we all know what that's coming from, right? That's probably going to be like more on my team side, more on the play now side and in the my career side. But I know I got to play devil's advocate. What does that mean for rec and pro-am? I believe in all honesty, like rec should have quick set plays that people want to hop into, even though. Users can, you know, hop into the play sets themselves. When you call a play, all players interact differently. For instance, if you actually go into the Pro-Am and you call like a 2-3 play, a 3-2 play and stuff like that, when you call those plays, your players respond to the movements different and stuff like that. Like they're not super, super locked in on the person that they're defending, but they can kind of like watch passing lanes and watch ball and, and interact a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? So, like, will 
I would say pro am they should get like a, a crazy crazy set of plays that might show play art for them and stuff like that as you know so they can learn it as they do them because you know I feel like pro am is like pro am is one of them things where it's like people call their own plays they do what they want and everybody has to execute you know in that moment but if they had more plays to learn, I know it can expand their minds on newer plays to run if they had that play art to, you know, actually lab with. Just imagine going into the Pro-Am setting, right, where you wait for a game, you inside the lobby and stuff like that. And you can go in and be like, yo, everybody, before we go into this game, let's go over some defensive or offensive plays, right? And as play art is happening, you can move around and stuff like that. And what if they even had AIs in there to help you run those plays? You know what I'm saying? Because when I go to the NBA 2K League events and stuff like that, or I watch the streams for their games, they have something where they can go into like a my court scenario, but it's more so like a 2KU scenario. And you can go in and go up against a player with your big, go up against a player with your guard and stuff like that. And they do scrims. So like they're playing against other players to get better. Pro-Am, Pro-Am needs that, that, that actual functionality to at least go up against AIs before they go in. Because, you know, you can go in and shoot from the corner and stuff like that to get your shot timing right and all that. But I feel like Pro-Am needs more. They need to bring back, like, that um, jump shooting challenge where, you know, it used to be in a mock court, the ball, you know, every time you shoot the ball, the ball get kicked back out to you and stuff like that. Because what happens is a player really can't necessarily work on a shot while having to run to get their own rebound. They was losing adrenaline bars going to go get that rebound, losing stamina to go get that rebound and run back to the spot that they were shooting from. Some of that stuff needs to be streamlined to make, you know, make them players better. You know what I mean? Like if it's going to be organized basketball like that, like, all right, if it needs to be organized basketball like that, then it, they need to have those, those type of parameters inside a pro and for sure. Rec, they should just allow us to call like little stuff like two, three, three, two. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Like I feel like offensive plays, we really don't need offensive plays, but more so defensive plays because it can get real sweaty inside the wreck if you if you go in there with a five stack and then you end up going up against a five stack that might have played tens last night and just coming into the wreck just because they want to blow off some steam or they it's no games really available to play for them inside pro am so sometimes that shit do be getting a little sweaty and plus you know we playing 2k bro i'm gonna be honest with you everybody that plays wreck some of them have dabbled in pro am in some sense you know what i'm saying like they've dabbled in the pro am so when i'm when i'm playing you know wreck and stuff like that New York or Boom or, you know, Tough or somebody be like, yo, oh, I know them. Oh, they they, they was playing Pro-Am last night. And then they'll be like, yo, this is going to be a good game. You know what I'm saying? Or they're going to be like, yo, this is going to be a sweaty game. Or they're going to say, yo, lock in. Like, so it's like, it's a different level when when people know people's gamer tags and stuff like that. And a little bit more, you know, serious situations happen off of the wreck. So it'd be a vibe, though. Um, my... <laughs> Hey, yo, my bad, bro. Yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, that, that was my alarm and shit. My bad. Um, but let's go ahead and scroll down. We done with that. Let's go ahead and um talk about Mike Wayne tweets for a second. All right. Um, let me see. Um, which copy is current and next gen the Mamba one, right? Um, no. Uh I believe that the I think it's like for the VC and stuff like that. Like you know what I'm saying? That's that's what the additions call for, like the different pre orders and stuff like that. I don't I don't think that the regular one is just like oh Co the Kobe and then like the Mamba joint. I don't think it's like that. I don't think it's like one is for current and one is for next. You know what I'm saying? It's just different prices. Um, let's see. So yesterday. Yesterday was was a lot. Mike Wang has been tweeting out like crazy, you know what I'm saying, all day yesterday, right? So we just going to go ahead and go through some questions real quick. Like, see, right here, right? His first reply of the day was, I'll try to fill out questions throughout the day, more info coming, right? So let me see. For um, both the layup and dunk meters, you have if <clears throat> if you have a pretty open lane, the green window is much bigger in 2K24, but it shrinks fast the heavier the traffic and again on hall of fame and competitive online you have to green dunks to make them so for all my slasher gang out there 
you already know. Put that bitch on 99 or nothing. I don't, 99 or nothing. Okay, slasher gang. 99 or nothing, bro. You you got to have the 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 biggest chance to green your dunks. Put that bitch on 99, you hear me? Put your motherfucking strength up. Dunk on some shit. Slasher gang. <laughs> um, I think the dunk meter should be removed. I mean, eh, I don't know. Um, shouldn't finishing be affected as well? Finishing is affected. Adrenaline boost, yeah. So this person thought that, you know, finishing wasn't affected, but it was. Um, variable shot timing has been toned down for 2K24. Also, we changed the shot timing impact shooting attribute to shot timing stability. Um, higher stability grades will further dampen the effects of fatigue slash defense on your shot speed. Um, is it going to be strictly green or miss in a wreck? It's green or miss, bro. Um, what impacts shot time stability, um, jump shot grades, badges, or ratings, or all of the above? It's a jump shot grade, release speed, release height, defensive immunity, and timing stability. So when you're going into the creator to create your jump shot, try to have A minus or up for everything. But mainly, timing stability, put that bitch anything that can get you an A plus. That's what I would say. You know what I'm saying? That, you know what I'm saying? Especially release speed, I can see an A minus to A. But when it comes to that stability shit, A pluses, y'all. A pluses, y'all, for sure. Um, let's see. Um, on open dunks, dunk meter is stupid. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Like, doing a, doing a dunk meter dunk on a fast break, that's stupid. For sure. The only time you should pull down a meter is when there is traffic to see if you could dunk on something. Because we really doing this shit for highlights. We not we not doing it to, you know, just to do it. No, if it's somebody in the paint, we trying to kill something, you feel pull on that meter. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Like, um, let's see. Your open, uh, op I'm sorry, your opponents and teammates um, won't see your shot meter online in NBA 2K24. But my advice is to turn off the shot meter as soon as you learn your timing. Shot meter off increases your green window size by 20%. You know I'm getting into that game with the shot meter off day one, right? I really do this shit. Y'all can, can check all my YouTube videos, bro. I don't use the meter. I don't use the meter. I'm getting 20% off the ripper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Um, <clears throat> is it green only or can you make whites again? Whites will not go in on Hall of Fame, rec, or park. Standard, bro. <clears throat> What's the difference between up-down contact dunks and down-up um, contact dunks? No difference, just a preference. All right, let me see. Um, uh, are adrenaline boosts still not going to be affected until after you pass half court or could someone full court press me and I lose them in the back court? You still won't lose adrenaline in the back court. So for all my people that get bumped, you know what I'm saying, for eight seconds, you know what I'm saying, just get up court. You won't lose no boost. Um, you said I'm finna go crazy. <laughs> all right, let me see. Um, will the signature movement styles be available in my career in 24? Okay. Yes, and Pro Play has given us a ton more. Um, I think we're up to 2K23's 37 to about 156 now. Now, can I be clear? Um, this person, when he said, will signature movement styles be available for, for uh, my career in 24? I don't know if Mike knew, but we don't have like movement styles on my career. But with him saying yes, that's fire. Because certain players will want to move like certain players, especially when they make replica builds and stuff like that. Um, how are the fades looking this year? Fades got a buff in the mid range and a big nerf at the three. But a lot of clips that we saw, you know, from that trailer yesterday, people were hitting step backs and fades from three. So I don't know if they played on rookie or whatever the case may be to get those clips or we just going to have to see when the game drop how fading truly is. Because I'm going to be honest, I don't think players out there are going to get you know, the agent threes and all of them, them badges up the fastest that they can. I think a lot of people work on other badges before that. So, but you know, there might be people out there that want to fade day one and, and start out by building up their fades. You know what I'm saying? By whether, whether it's starting out at the mid range or starting out at the three. Um, let's see. Yo, appreciate that sub, yo. F y'all feeders. <laughs> 
Um, we spent a lot of time on this. Um, how is drawing fouls in a wreck? Is there emphasis on skill? Can you uh, purposely do it? We spent a lot of time on this, and it's way better. If you fake and get the defender to bite, you can draw a foul and get in ones way more reliably. Also, if blockers jump wildly for no reason, they'll land on ball handlers and get called for fouls. Okay. Our green switches back in 2K24. That's a big thing. Not every make will be a swish because of the green or miss will would be a swish on every shot. But there are a lot of lot more swishes in NBA 2K24. I'm pretty sure no one will complain about the occasional rimming. Hopefully, hopefully it's, it's, it's not too many occasional ones. Uh, generally, all advanced shot types, spins, step backs, got a buff in the mid range. And all advanced layups, euros, floaters, reverses, hops, spins, quick scoops, got a buff too. Try to mix up your arsenal of scoring moves and you'll be rewarded. So that means all of the people who want to create like Kyrie builds and stuff like that, like go crazy. Go crazy. Like if you want to create those type of slashers that finish at the rim without being a dunker, try it out. Let me know how it goes because I ain't going to be doing that. I'm I'm going to be locking shit up. You know what I mean? So y'all let me know how that go. You feel me? Um, you said our core badges still in? Hopefully he uh, talked about core badges and hopefully somebody, you know, asked him that question. I could, I could tweet it to him real quick. Um, let me see. Mike Wayne. Post. Hey. Oh, shit. That's loud as fuck. Hey. Our core badges still. No, not still. Coming back. Alright, hopefully hopefully he respond. Hopefully he respond. Um, let me see. Uh is there any changes to the shot contest system? The contest system changed a lot. The main highlights, greater emphasis on body position instead of just hand location. Big reason for the ghost contest complaints last year. Heavier penalties for being crowded at the start of the shot. Less for out of position late closeouts. Okay. Um are the green animations going to pop up every time? Um, and when I green it, is it going to switch more consistent? Yes, your, uh, your shot celebration animation on every made green outside of 15 feet. Um, damn, this kind of sucks. I like the suspense of not knowing if a shot was going to go in. Now people are just going to cherry pick like crazy if they don't see an animation start. Um, did this person even play 2K23, bro? What the fuck? Like, did he even play 2K23? There was a huge delay when people when people like shots would go up. The green the green wasn't instantaneous. The animation wasn't that instantaneous. Like, what the fuck? There's a slight delay on the animations as well as the feedback, so the suspense will still be there. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that that Jacob guy played 23 very often. I don't know, bro. Um has there been a buff in paint defense? Tired of being put on a poster when I'm in good position for a swat, respectfully. Paint defense was a major focus and was reported as the biggest gameplay improvement from our external playtest sessions. I think we have a really good balance right now. Okay. That means that, that means nothing needs to get changed much. Um, since layup timing is important better uh, this year, will there be an option to have just a layup meter on? Yes, yeah, so lots of new control settings this year. Separate toggles for shots, layups, free throws, as well as a control type pro stick button. You can also reposition and resize just about every on-screen element, shot meter, player indicator, fatigue bar. Okay. Um, so you have to time layups no matter what. You can turn layup timing off if you want. Um, but my advice is to play with it on first. If you get good at it, you'll finish around the room better with it on. So if you if you have layup timing on, you'll you'll finish better, I'm guessing. So that's some that's something that they all looking at to go reactivate. Alright, so these are all his developer diary stuff. Um, can we still lock our layup timing with L two like twenty three? Yes, for jumpers too, low key fun fun with his shoot. Um, damn, this tweet is unavailable. Dude deleted his tweet. Ball saves are solid. I thought they were good in 2K23 too. Blocks got a buff in 2K24, but not 2K22 levels. Okay, so blocking got buffed. Um, are alley oops still metered? Yes, it's not hard though. Okay, slashers. It sounds. It's not like slashers is getting 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 a, a, a big thumbs up here. Will bases be like like <laughs> this? Nigga asked for base 38, bro. No way. 
No generic number of shots. Uh, we are all on real NBA player shots generated by pro play. There are a ton of options, though. I'm sure you'll find something you like. Nah, bull acts for base 38, bro. Um, what does lock the meter mean? Uh, let me see. You said, uh, hold on. Where is it at? Where is it at? You talking about, um, can we still lock or lay up timing with L2? Um, I, I don't know, bro. I don't, I don't use layup timing, so I don't know what they talking about. That's a, that's a whole conversation above my pay grade. <laughs> um, let's see. With custom shots, um, that we make and, um, the jump shot creator, um, will there still be a grade zone shot attributes? If exactly how does it work? Like, is it better to have A plus rather than the B minus? Um, it's to your benefit to create a jumper with the highest grades you can, of course. Defensive immunity is one I particularly recommend paying attention to. Um, what's the differences in shot contests? Uh, percentage from A plus to, to an F. We don't want to guess. Uh, we want to know how effective the grades are. A plus will re reduce the contest score by about 30%. F will boost it by about 30%. And it's subject to change. So, like, he was letting them know, like, the, like a A-plus um, grade on your, like, defensive immunity can reduce the contest score by 30, bro. So, like, if you were supposed to hit, like, if somebody's supposed to get, like, a 38% um, percent contest, you mean to tell me they, like, with your fucking defensive immunity, all your badges, that shit could probably be, like, maybe a 5% contest, an 8% contest? That's crazy. But like you said, it's, it might be subject to change depending on how shooting feels for everybody, most likely. Um, has anyone asked? Uh, okay, that was inside of the courtside report. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this was all in the courtside report. Um, hey, yo, D Money, because as a, as a content creator, bro, like you got to understand, like there's some stuff about content that I don't cover. I don't cover the best meters in the game. I don't cover layup timing. Like, I don't cover none of that stuff. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, when it comes to, like, somebody who says that they've been locking a layup timing and all that weird stuff with, like, L2, like, I don't know what that means. I'm not in that I'm not in that group of content creators that know about that specific thing. You feel me? I don't know all things 2K, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's other people that teach me shit all the time. You know what I'm saying? Um... Do ratings exceed the 99 cap and take over on NBA 2K24? Yes, take over can temporarily boost your rating over 99, and it will make a difference. Fuck. Somebody can have 103 fucking three-pointer, bro. Take over. What the fuck? Sheesh. Um, are the takeover perks still in the game? Yes, but some of the OP ones have been toned down. So takeover perks are still in the game. Just a little bit toned. Um... Oh, yeah. A 103 dunk is crazy. No, it ain't, bro. Slasher game. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we need a definitive number, bro. 10. What? I want to see what this says. Um, okay, the ratings boost you get with takeover selection just stacks on top of what you already have. If you have dog rebounding ratings, for example, selecting the defensive rebound to take, it makes you a little less of a bum on the boards, but you still kind of be a bum. What? Okay, okay. So please tell me. Okay, okay, we need definitive numbers 10. He responded. He's crying. Okay, so so I'm guessing if you have a 70 rebound and you got the rebound to take, you can go up to 80. I'm guessing. Okay, all right. Um, Yes, the green window is pure. Okay, boom, boom. This will always be pop. Okay, boom, boom. Okay, boom, boom. All right, let's see. Um, is all animations going to be available at the start or will it be a seasonal thing? There will still be some seasonal releases, but the vast majority of gameplay animations will be available on day one. 2K24 also features the largest um, YOY SIG animation upgrade we've done in recent memory thanks to ProPlay. Okay, cool. Um, yo, Mr. Tony was good. <laughs> 103 still is crazy. <laughs> Um, boom, boom, yes, okay. Greens are still delayed because uh, I like it that way. Can we get greens right away this year? Please, everyone wants to know. No, you can't. You cannot cherry pick, bro. Buckets wants to cherry pick, bro. Literally, Buckets wants to cherry pick, bro. Can we see the greens right away this year? Please, everyone wants to know. Nah, bro, he, try, he trying to cherry pick, bro. 
All right. Um, will there be any confirmation exact increases on attributes when the takeover ball is full and when it's activated, 10 point boost, but not set in stone? We'll evaluate based on feedback. All right. Um, since no one asks, you can also meter dunk standing dunks in 2K24, but it's really hard to pull off at the moment. Work in progress. Yeah, I remember um trying to do a trying to do a aggressive uh contact dunk standing, um in one of these 2Ks, bro. That meter was moving fast as fuck. I mean, super fast. Like that shit was so fast, I couldn't even like control my player, bro. Like I that bitch was very late. <laughs> With the pro play, um, have jump shots been revamped and the clip KD jump shots look to be a, a bit different than the one we currently have? Yeah, we have a ton of new jumpers sourced from pro play. KD's jumper uh, perfectly mirrors his real life shot. Happens to be the shot I've been using on my player for the last few weeks too. So Mike Wayne, Mike Wayne has confirmed that he's been using Kevin Durant's shot and he likes it. Um, let's see. What are some things we should look out for as far as dribbling goes? Try out different breakdown combos. There are a hundred to choose from. Sig double crosses are equipable now. Standing snatchback has changed and is now tied to Sig step back package. Definitely learn how to use the blowout um, properly. Branching uh, generally way more responsive in 2K24. So for the dribblers this sounds like you guys are gonna have a fucking plethora of moves to pull off and if you don't lose adrenaline from doing certain moves like small crazy speed bursts and stuff like that y'all fuck around be moving like demons out there by the time the third week of the game starts um whoa hold on what's this this boy snapped out what happened um for those asking um, okay, what well, rating you need to be consistent depends on your skill and shot IQ. Some will be deadly as a, with a 75.3 pointer, while others will go 1 for 10. Try out the new builder to test the 2KU with different NBA players on Hall of Fame to get an idea for what um, you need for your build. You said this last year. Nice try, bucko. And it's pretty much going to be the same answer every year. Uh-oh. Waldo created character. That can't be a real nigga. That nigga... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Mike Wang is saying that you should be deadly enough with a 75 three-pointer, which a lot of people were. A lot of people were. Um, hearing about this offensive stuff, what about defense? Anybody up um, that's not considered a blow-by win for the ball handler? Okay, let me see. What would be considered a bump enough for the offensive player to lose an adrenaline? Riding their hip, bumping them off course or full body up? Anybody up that's not considered a blow by win for the ball handler. Okay. Huh? It's a win for the ball handler. Anybody up that's not considered a blow by. So so a blow by body. Oh, okay. So you can blow by your defender inside of a body up. Is that what I'm, that's what I'm hearing or seeing? I don't know. What y'all think, chat? Shooting period locks. Yes, sir. I'm telling you. Uh, let's see. Um, is there going to be some sort of penalty for players who spam the off player out of bounds call? Getting someone who does that in a wreck game nonstop makes the game unplayable. Facts. Yes, offensive player out of bounds has been added to the griefing rules. Players who do it will grade out. Oh, my God. All oh, you motherfuckers. All oh, you sons of bitches standing out of bounds thinking you being fucking funny. Y'all niggas dead in the water. You're dead. You feel me? Dead, bro. Thank fucking God. Oh, by the way, just to let y'all know, standing animations with the D-pad when you have the ball, <laughs> they're in the game, bro. <laughs> All right. Um, you can choose any. Don't expect the shooting takeover to make you make you DeRozan if you're rocking a 25 shot mid rating. Okay. 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 So is he saying power forwards at six ten to six eleven? Um, that have a 25 shot mid, he ain't gonna go crazy. So hold on. You can get the. You can get a a, a shooting take with a 25 mid. What the fuck? I don't know. 
Um, forgot to mention this one. There's a takeover menu in the game that lets you set whether you stay locked to your mob player or control the whole team when team take gets activated. Come on, Mike. Finally, bruh. Actual whole entire player lock. Sometimes we don't want to control the team in my career, bro. Oh, my God, bro. I used to hate controlling the team, bro. I would forget that I had takeover and be playing on a whole other player and get a defensive breakdown because I thought I was still locked on my my player, bro. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. All right. Um, Let's see. Steel and blocks will consume adrenaline bars on defense. First bar going 20% of block and steel rating nerf. Two bars going 40% nerf. Third bar going equals 75% nerf. So if you got a god damn, if you got a 99 and you ain't got no bars out that bitch, and you got a 99 block, you might well forget it, bro. You go ahead and put your motherfucking hands up. Don't even jump, cuz just go ahead and put your motherfucking hands up, bro. Just, just go ahead, man. Cause you ain't doing shit, bro. Yeah, two reaches and no steal. Yes, yeah, a GG. I ain't gonna lie. Um, let me see. The ratings boost will get uh with the takeover selection. Just stacks on top of the ones you already have. We already, we already read that. The boosts are implied to the attributes associated with the category you choose. So ten points to all attributes are just ones based off takeover slashing. Shouldn't take shouldn't increase shooting or defense or playmaking or anything else other than well slashing. Oh, yeah, because there were certain takeovers that would make you better at slashing and shooting. But that was also, like, juice perk being on top of that. So, like, juice, the juice perk would make you better over time without even needing takeover. Like, juice was, juice is probably going to be one of the OP perks that they nerfed or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? Because there was never really any definitive numbers on how much better it made us. But I remember having on a juice perk. With an 85-3 and just limitless on silver. And I wouldn't have takeover and I'd be hitting motherfucking limitless standing at the hash. Like, that's how crazy Juice was. And that was, like, off a of defensive play. Like, that's how crazy Juice was, bro. Um, are there new pass styles? About twice as many as last year from pro play. Um, what's your favorite thing about the new pro play feature? Love how authentic jumpers are. If you love the NBA, you'll immediately notice. We also get animations from pro play that we wouldn't think to capture in mocap. So there are some really unique shots, moves, and passes that can change the gameplay for the better. Okay. <clears throat> um, what's the sweet spot, in your opinion, on on-ball handle and speed with ball? What ratings will lock unlock the top-tier animations? This is huge for dribblers. Um, he said that he really likes Steph and Trey moves, which is, you know, they have some of the best moves in the game and probably going to have them even better with pro play. But it says the highest unlock is Steve Francis six size up at 95. Now, the 95 six size up, that's definitely going to be what ball handle and speed with ball mixed or will it only be speed with ball or ball handle? So like. A 95 is high as fuck, though. I ain't gonna lie. 95 is high. So, you know what I'm saying? For all y'all dribblers out there, man, be dribblers, bro. You need that Steve Francis to, to go ahead and cook. Go ahead and put that 95 on. You feel me? I don't know what you gonna do. Um, when you say dunks are green or miss, does it include lobs? No. Finishing alleys works almost identically to 2K23. Okay. That's, that's cool. That's cool because, well, I mean... Yeah, I feel like alley oops. Alley oops basically in twenty three. It was one of them situations where if you got bumped in traffic or um, you so like I remember Rambo. I think Rambo missed like three slightly lates back to back to back, and then he had to green it in order to make it. So it definitely goes by rating and stuff like that, and, and being in traffic. So if it worked like twenty three, I'm cool with it. You know what I'm I just hope that. Your teammates don't see the green, the green uh meter. You know what I'm saying? The little, the little circle joint. Hope, hope teammates and, and opponents don't see it. Just you. You know what I'm saying? Because man, that, man, giving somebody a tutorial on when to jump for a block is is crazy to me. It's always been crazy. <clears throat> Do you guys have any info on Team Tate? Will it work similar as uh, 2K23? Um, so I had asked in this one. Um, I think I responded to it saying, so, like, basically, to get Team Tate, everybody on the team needs to have a B in the, in the meter needs to get filled up. That's that's what I understand. 
So, cancer alley was going in again. I mean, probably. Probably. I mean, in all honesty, I'm going to be real with you. Sometimes it was a visual a visual problem with those. Like, you know, if you see the joint cancel out at the last second, you're like, yo, how did he complete the dunk? Some of that shit was visual shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that person pressed square at the right time. But it just canceled out because it was this, just the visual shit. I don't know why. Um... Will we be able to see um, each individual player's progress towards team take meter? Um, it'd be it'd be nice to know exactly uh, what each player has to do to get team take. We experimented with that idea, but the UI got really messy. The takeover meters have percentages on them, so now so um, you can at least hop on the mic and tell people where you're at. Okay. Okay, okay. He said you can hop on the mic and tell your teammates, yo, I'm close to team T. All right, um, with the contact dunks, uh, is there any other option in the settings to just use the shot button for contact dunks instead of going up and down or up, down, or down, up? You can still get contact dunks with the shot button, but it's just a dice roll chance based on ratings. The frequency goes down significantly on Hall of Fame and in rec slash park, though. So just like last year, if somebody had a 99 driving dunk and they press square, you really never really got contacts. You know what I'm saying? Like if you press square, it was quick drops, straight arm tomahawks, motherfucking Clyde Drexler, shit like that. It wasn't really never contact dunks. But when you pulled on the meter, it was like a damn near a, a like a 92% chance that you would try to kill something. You know what I'm saying? When you had a 99 driving dunk. When you pulled the meter on like an 86 driving dunk, it's probably like a 70% chance that you would trigger a contact, you know what I'm saying, and, and even lower for, for bills that didn't have it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's what I understand from that. Um, but, yeah, that's 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 everything right there, man. That's that's all of Mike Wayne's uh, replies and tweets and stuff like that from the entire first day of the 2K News drop. Um <clears throat> Yo, appreciate that follow. Appreciate that follow. By the way, appreciate the almost 200 in here, man. I've been rocking. Um, let's see. Are there any questions for me before I get up out of here? I got a um, I got a, a, a video and photo shoot that I got to get to soon. <clears throat> 2K needs to fix screens. It's insane running through 20 screens and no moving screen is called. It's cheesy. I feel like moving screens were definitely one of those things last year where you really had to catch somebody really like running like full speed with the screen like i remember i was doing moving screens a lot like i would still be stepping you know what i'm saying and stuff like that moving from side to side trying to get trying to get the defender hit on the screen and stuff like that so it's definitely something that needs to be addressed for sure because it takes away from the basketball aspects but it's also hard because the point guard moves so fucking fast like the point guard moves faster than everybody else on the court and as a big Trying to keep up with them, bro. Like, sometimes you just got to slip that motherfucker. Like, playing with New York and them and, and, and Dooms and, and stuff, like, slipping the screen is a lot better than just fucking holding. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can come up, right, and scare the big. Like, when you come up the and you don't even got to set it, bro, you can come up and just stand there. The big will rush to the all, like, behind you on the off ball side. And you can just turn around and sprint right back to the paint, bro. Easy pick and roll, bro. Like, you don't have to always set that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could just huh, pop up and then pop back down. Like, it's all about you seeing what the other big is doing in reaction. You know what I'm saying? If the big is not moving, that's when you, you know, you hold and you set your screen. You know what I'm saying? To try to get the uh, awesome, the offensive player up. You know what I'm saying? Um, w Stream, appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Hopefully they put some respect on the bigs and get um we be getting bullied for years. Yeah, hopefully. Uh crazy thing is I haven't seen any nerfs for dribblers. Why why should you okay. Would you rather see dribblers get a nerf or would you rather see defense get boosted and actually have an equal playing field this time around? Which one would you rather have? Or are you one of those people that says nerf offense anyway and still buff defense? You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's all about, like, where you stand on that spectrum. And I have no problem with how you feel. Like, it's all about personal preference. At the end of the fucking day, 
We all play this game for our own reasons. We should not all have hive mentality, okay? I always stress that shit. Play this game the way you want to play it. Make the build you want to uh, use. Make the, you know, create the jump shots you want to use. Just play the game you, the way you want to play it. Don't worry about everybody else trying to feed you their, you know, their beliefs and thought processes. Play this shit for you, bro. Have fun knowing that you did this shit, you know, for you. You know what I'm saying? Not for everybody else. You did um, so on Ronnie shit, it said, um, it was for the city. So it seasons and wreck, uh, it seasons for the wreck and stuff. See, Sonic Fighter, that's, that's the thing, right? So like the little, the little asterisk at the bottom of it, right? It says rep is back. Rep in the city content is only available in NBA 2K24 new gen for PS5 and Xbox slash X, right? So I believe they're just letting people know that rep is coming back, but only on next gen. That's what they wanted to let everybody know. Rep is coming back, but only for next gen. They are trying to move away from last gen. And with these steps with pro play, cross play, now rep is back. That's three fucking home runs to say it is now time for me to take my PlayStation 4, all them fucking ice chips and fucking fans and shit next to it, take my Xbox One and go trade it in, go sell it on um, OfferUp, sell it on eBay, and go get me a next-gen console. That's what they're trying to do here. That's what it sounds like in my head as far as like knowing what marketing and shit is like. They're trying to move on. This this is the moment. Like remember, when we got NBA 2K14 next gen for like PlayStation uh what was it, PlayStation 4 and shit like that? It took a few years. They were still making a bare bones like, you know, PlayStation 3 game, but it didn't take until like I think like 2K I would say like 18 to really was like, "Oh shit." everything different like it's not a box anymore it's not just parks or whatever the case may be like it took them a few years to be like oh we hopping into the next iteration of like trying to max out the console that we on i feel like right now with them talking about this pro play technology that's mocap shit so now they already stepping ahead on that giving us more, more moves and now it's like it's time to start maxing out the benefits of these next-gen consoles because a lot of them are now coming out. They're on the shelves. They just waiting to be purchased. And 2K is trying to get people to come over to the next iteration, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's time to shift the player base. Let's be honest. Like, a lot of the problems that stemmed was people didn't want to play the game. People went back to the old gen because a lot more players was on it because they felt like they weren't getting enough games and their friends weren't playing the new game. Now, it seems like 2K wants everybody to try to focus on coming on over to the next game, being in that crossplay uh, bag, no matter if you're on Xbox or PlayStation, and just come play the new game, bro. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, I think probably won't. Let me see what time is it. Okay, won't. Um, let's see. Big W on 2K. They're exclusive to next gen, though. Hmm, current gen missing out. No, no, no. Current gen is not missing out. Current gen is done. Current, we have to move on. At some point, we have to move on, y'all. It's just that fucking simple. Not many of us own a PlayStation 3 no more. You feel what I'm saying? Like, at some point, we have to move on from these older consoles. You know what I'm saying? They become obsolete. Like, y'all know iPhone don't make anything under the iPhone 13 no more? Did y'all know that? Like, they don't make anything under the iPhone 13 anymore. All of the rest of those iPhones are fucking obsolete. They can't even put the new chips that they have in the newer phones, the 14s and the, the 15 that's coming out, inside of a 12. They can't do it. It's not compatible. It's the phone is the phone is just obsolete. The tech, the hardware, everything built into them 12s is obsolete and everything under. So at some point we have to move on, bro. At some point. And that's just coming from like a tech head, bro. At some point you gotta move on, bro. <laughs> Yo, chef, what's good? <clears throat> uh people pay four hundred dollars on builds, but don't buy a console. Hey, that's none of my business. That's their money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's none of my business. Um I'm not surprised Apple scrapped them motherfuckers. Yeah, I mean, um, technically the PS4 is last gen. That's what I'm saying. It's it's over. Last gen's gone, bro. It's time, bro. Chill on my 12. Hey yo, Jay. It's time, bro. It's time. When you when you come, come on over to like the like wait for the 15, bro. Don't get the 14, bro. Wait for the 15, bro. <clears throat> when I drop, 
Um, this you know what I'm what I'm uh, asking. <laughs> well, what you what you asking about the corn? Why I haven't been Why I haven't been doing uh, my farming? I, I've been I'm <clears throat> I'm busy. Like I'm I'm really busy. Like like um I'm I'm in Phoenix for business, so I'm super busy. <clears throat> um, I just got the iPhone 14 Pro from the 12. It looks like he gave me a new iPhone because um I have iPhone 12 Pro Max. Yeah. Um. Repost me vid real quick. What? Okay. Um. We gonna play 2K <clears throat> in Vision Pro soon. Okay. Yeah. That you talking about uh the Apple shit? So what's your opinion on the dunk time and, and how's it gonna work? Okay. So it's gonna work like last year. Um. With the with the dunk meter, they already said when you have a clear lane, the dunk meter is gonna have more green in it, which is gonna allow you to green your your dunks a lot easier inside a wreck and park, right? But when you're in traffic, unless you have a 95 and above, I wouldn't trust it. Slash your game. I am saying I'm coming. I'm coming for somebody that slash. I know I'm going to press square and 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 the analog up and stuff like that for safety dunks. But if you want to use that motherfucking meter, bro, you better put your dunk up, bro. I'm just being honest, bro. You said if you couldn't dunk last year, don't try to dunk this year. You wasn't slasher gang, bro. I'm telling you. All right, but chat, listen, I'm going to get up out of here, man. I need to go. I'm not going to lie. I need to go, bro. It's time for me to go ahead and get inside the, uh, get, in, get in the shower and shit, man. So um, I appreciate y'all for coming out, you know what I mean, coming through to the stream, kicking it with me. Um, this VOD will be up after um, I get off, all right? So I appreciate y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace. King Kong, King Kong, King Kong, I buy. King Kong, King Kong, King Kong, I buy. King Kong, King Kong.